Turn it on. Okay, we're on. <laughs> All right. And I've, why? Oh yes, the observer. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so this is kind of, and you can speak if you want to ask anything. We're on camera. Um, so the observer. Uh, it's uh, I, I call it the observer tool. And um, so. Uh, oh yes, yes, I'm not there. So okay, we're going to do. We'll do. Oh, oh, it's a good excuse to drink something. Mm -hmm. Now this is a mug. This is a mug, and this is an object. Okay, uh, you can either speak or nod your head. Is anyone in this room a mug? Uh, no, no, I'm getting no. nose from people. <laughs> so, so people are not an object they observe. So if you see an object, you're not the object that you observe. You are the observer of the object which is observed. So we're all in agreement. This is like a meaningless mug and, um, and no one has got any confusion that they are the mug. Everyone is the observer. And when you're the observer of the mug, by definition, the observer must be bigger than the limits of the mug. Are we in agreement? Yeah, because if the, obs the observer has to be bigger than the limits to know the limits. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so everyone is not the mug, so, or I could say everyone is not an object, they are the observer of the object, and the observer of the object must be bigger than the object in order for it to be able to observe the limits of the object. Yes? We're all in, we're all in agreement. Okay. So, so, when I observe an object, I am not the object, okay? I am the observer of the object, okay? Also, the thing with the mug is, the mug can be here, or it cannot be here, but the observer is still here. Yeah, we agree in agreement? Mm -hmm. Mug is here, sometimes the mug can be here, and the mug is observed, and sometimes the mug is not here, but there's still observation, whether the mug is here or not. So this is a passing object which can be here or cannot be here, but whether it's here or not here, the observer is always here. Okay, this is great. So we're all in agreement that there's no mugs in this room, which is good. Okay, so the observer is about experiencing who, who or what I am. And also it's about finding out who or what I am not. Okay, so we're, we're all in agreement that uh, none of us here are mugs. Okay, so now we come to the things. What about thoughts? Okay, so is anybody a thought? Uh, no, not thoughts. Okay, good, because thoughts are observed. They come and go, don't they? And actually, the they, they can be observing when there's no thoughts, and still one exists. And then sometimes there can be many thoughts, sometimes there can be a few thoughts. But there is always observation, and there's observing of the thoughts coming and going, or whether there's many thoughts or no thoughts, there's still observation. Great, we're on to a good start. So, one is not one's thoughts, one is the observer of thoughts, but thoughts can be here or not here, but still one is here. Yeah. What about images? Is anybody here an image? No? Okay, good. We're doing really well. So. We're not thoughts, we're not images. Is anyone here a feeling that can come and go? No? We're in a very good group today. Okay. okay, so thoughts can come and go, but we're not the thoughts. Feelings can come and go, but we're not the feelings. Images can come and go. So that would also mean memories. Memories can come and go, but we're not the memories as well. Okay, so... I think, well, what else is there? So there's feelings, thoughts, images, memories. Okay, so is there anything? Have I missed out anything? I think that's everything. Is that our bodies? Okay, good, good, good. We're not our bodies. Or yes, we're okay, our okay, bodies. yes, sir. Is anybody here, um, so is anybody here experiencing themselves as a body? Partially. Okay. I have a. Pardon? I'm, I'm made up of. Well, that, 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 that's but just... I think I'm the, the observer. But, I mean, in some ways, you could say the observer is the higher self. You know, some traditions will talk about higher self and the lower self. Well, 
doesn't not make it intellectual. I, I'm really not trying to make it intellectual. Yeah. I just think that my body is part of me, and my thoughts and my feelings are part of me. But the, my observe, the, I observe those, and my higher self is the observer or the awareness. Okay. That's uh, why. Okay. So is the mug a part of you? No. Ah. So I just have to check that out. Okay, so the mug is not a part of you. But this, the mug is observed. Well, I guess actually, there, in a sense, yes. The answer is yes as well. Because above, above that higher self that's awareness, I think, you know, we're connected to everything. If I was fully enlightened, I probably would think I was also the mug and I was everything. So, like, in a sense, there's two answers to that question. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, to, we're trying to... We're, we're, this is, we're talking experientially, yeah. Because what depends what level of experience you're talking about. Well, yes, true. Yeah, the level of experience right now is that I'm not the mug, but that my body is part of me, okay. and that the observer is, is me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there's an experience, your experience, what are you experiencing now as you? Um, my, all the sensations in my body, um, the awareness of these sensations in my body, um, the awareness of my thoughts, all this, just everything that's going on sort of within this, you know, the boundary of, <laughs> so the thoughts, feelings, and the physiological sensations within So, me. So can you be the observer of your awareness? I'm just trying to understand that would mean something can I be the observer? No, 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 it's not, it's not, no, no, it's not a question, it's not, it's not that type of question. So, there is obser observation of the mark, yes? It's, a, it's, a, it's an experiential question, it's not a mental question. If you're able to just leave your head out, you might have to refer to it, but it, I, is the experience that you are the mug or is there observing of the mug? I'm observing the mug. That's, that's the experience, isn't it? The mug is being observed. Okay, so, if there are sensations in the body, these sensations of the body, they, they tend to come and go and change, don't they? Mm. And sometimes there's no awareness yeah. of things. So, whether there are sensations in the body or not, there is here, there is, can you connect experientially to the observer of sensations, which is not the sensations? Oh yeah, I can. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if you're in the observer, being in the observer, are you the sensations? No, but it depends where I put my awareness, because I would say that at times, my awareness is more in my awareness and at times my awareness is more pulled into my thoughts and my feelings. Well that's true. Sometimes yeah. your attention can be very much in the mug. Mm. But are you the mug? No. No, just because and I know, I know, I, I, I know, I know, I understand the kind of the experiment, thought experiment, but I'm trying to give you an honest answer, not the right answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, and my honest answer is that sometimes I feel like I'm, I, that my body is me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's sometimes. What I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm believing that I am my thoughts. I believe that I am yeah. my emotions. I believe that I am my own story in my mind. Yeah. That's when I'm. That's when I know I'm. Right that's when, I'm, when, I, that's when, when I. When I. I'm not in the present moment, or I'm not yeah. in my awareness. And I'm aware of that, <laughs> but it still happens to me because I'm not enlightened. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, All yes. But yeah. I, okay, so. You ex so you experience times when there's clarity that you're not the body. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I thought you were asking about now. Yes, I was asking about now. Yeah. So right now, I, I experience myself as that my mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I am also my body as well as my awareness. Okay. So can you can you be the observer of the body? Yes. Okay. And in the observing, are you the body? That I find harder to give you the answer that I think you're driving at, which is that I feel like I can be both. Okay, so can you be the observer of that which experiences itself to be both? Don't use your head. Well, it doesn't. If I don't use my head, it doesn't. Oh. I can't give you an answer. Okay. Yeah. So if if there are thoughts, can you be the observer of thoughts? If there are thoughts, can I be the observer? Can you be the, the detached witnessing of Yes, thoughts? I can be the detached. Is that, is that occurring now? In and out, I would say, because I'm feeling emotions attached to my thoughts, thoughts attached to my emotions, um, and I'm, so I'm sort of partially in that and also partially aware of this <laughs> sort of 
happening as well. Okay, no, good. Yeah, so it's kind of it's an in and out fluid thing for me. Yeah. You know, like when there's an in and out thing, like you're in the body and the feelings, and then you're out of the body and the feelings, yeah. you're in the body and out. There is an observing of the in and out, which is not the in and out. So if there's a fluctuation of something, there is something that observes the fluctuation, which is not the fluctuation. Yeah. So if something feels, I'm in my feelings, I'm out of my feelings. I'm in my feelings, I'm out of my feelings. I'm in my thoughts, I'm out of my thoughts. And there's kind of an in and out experience. Yeah. And yet there's a greater observation of the in and out, which is not the in and out. There is, a, there is a detached observing that observes in and out, which is not affected by yeah. in and out occurring. Yeah. Yeah? This, uh, this observing of the in and out is not the in and out. Mm. And this observing of the in and out has got nothing to do with the thoughts or the feelings that are going in and out. This is experiential. Is it still? Uh, is, is, what's the experience now? Um, that I'm more observing. Okay, it's good. I was observing the in and out as you were talking. About good, good. So there is also an. You know, so when there is a in and out, there is something which observes it, which is detached from the in and out, which is not the in and out. So this then takes you out. When something is identified or is in, there is interest in something, then it seems like this thing becomes you. And when there is, when the interest is gone, then there is clarity that it's not you. So for example, like this mug is a meaningless object. It's a neutral object. So most people don't have a problem looking at the mug and they have no doubt they are not the mug. But when something becomes very interesting, like thoughts for most people are very interesting, and they get confused that they are their thoughts. Or like I'm an addict, so if there was donuts on the table, then I'd be like fixated on the donuts. So it would almost be like they're they're, they're a part of me. So, so then it becomes difficult to get to that place of witnessing where there's clarity, it's not you. Because there's a, there's a strong kind of mean, projected meaning with the thought or with the feeling. I find it quite easy actually to think that my thoughts aren't me. Okay. What I find harder is um, my, to that my physiological sensations aren't me? Yes. Well, then, then that's, that's, I, would, I would say that's the correct way to say it, because they're still meaningful, yeah. you see. So you don't get that clarity that they, you know, they've got nothing to do with what you are. Mm. So hence the line, which I think is really, I mean, there's two, two of my favorite lessons in A Course in Miracles, is all my thoughts are meaningless, and I'm not a body, I'm free, for I was God created me because they're two of the major attachments. As soon as you have interest in your thoughts, it's like you are your thoughts. If you, and if you have any interest in any thought, then you become the mind. You don't have the awareness that that is something that has been witnessed, that is not you. If you have, like, the, the, it's a part of the collective ego, like there's such huge attachment to the body and what goes on in the body. You know, there's such, um, a thing that I am my body, that, uh, that the Course is trying to break that. You know, it says it multiple times, I'm not a body, I'm free, for as God created me. I'm not a body, I'm free. There is a witnessing of the, the feelings. You know, the body, it's kind of like a, a limited shape, isn't it? Something observes limits, which is not limits, yes? There is a witnesser of the limited, which is not limited. That can be, that's not an intellectual thing I'm saying here. Like, if there's any experience of limits in this room, the limits of the body, the limits of the table, something is observing those limits, which is not limited. Yeah. It has no, and it is totally free of limits, and it has not got any attachment or connection to the limits. In that experiencing, it's very, very clear that one is not the mug. One is the witnesser, the limitless, eternal witnesser of the mug. 
One is not the body. One has got nothing to do with the body. That's a, that's a clear experience, not a, not a thinking thing, you see. In that, it's eternal, it's free of time, it's free of limits, it's, un, it's undying. So that, can, that's the, that is what I call the observer tool, you see. It's only when things have got a, there is a projected specialness on to something. Like for most people, a mug is not special to anyone. So if I hold the mug up universally, no one is confused, they are the mug. It's like the ignorant observer. But when I start saying things like thoughts and bodies, then you know, suddenly they can become resistance. What about the idea of I am versus I have? Who um, has? What are you that has? Yeah, well exactly, I know, I know. But the, you're, you're using this example and I, and I get it on one level, but on another level I think, of course we've been People have been interacting with us our whole lives, saying your leg or your hand or you, looking at us as a physical thing. They haven't been pointing to us and saying you're that mug. We haven't been kind of conditioned culturally for decades. So, yes. of course, it's going to be much harder for us to disidentify with yes. our own bodies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, I agree. And then you said the, the right words, the word, one of my favourite words, disidentify. Mm. Thank you. That's my favourite word. Cause it's only the identification which causes the murkiness. Mm. As soon as you release identification, surrender the, the special projection, yeah. then it's very, very clear that the nature of true self is limitless, eternal, undying, not in time, mm. not in limits. That is my true... I'm not limited. My, when, I, when, I, when I have identification with limits, I experience my limited self. When I release all identification with all limits, I experience my limitless, infinite, eternal, undying self. Yeah. So I, on a certain level, my experience can be, I am the mug. I am the limited mug. But if I let go of that identification, I experience myself as limitless, you see. But that's the same thing with thoughts and body and feelings and sensations. So. If you, if you experience yourself as a limit in the now, you're experiencing a limited consciousness. And separated, I guess. And separated well. consciousness. Yeah, a source of separation. That's right. So when you fight for your limits, you know, to stay that, you know, I mean, it's not that you fight for your limits, but if you're willing to be the observer, the non-identified observer of the limit you currently experience, that is called the observer tool. So I might experience myself as the body, but then can I be the witnesser of the body? Then I'll be the witnesser of the body. Can I be the witnesser of thoughts? Then I'll be the witnesser of thoughts. Can I be the witnesser of time? See, then I'll be timeless. Can I be the witnesser of, of here and there? Then I'll be beyond here and there, you see? So, and this is experiential. One of the things you need to be aware of is that when you're doing the exercise, uh, a bit of a tip is drop using your head to think about it. Because I'm not, drop, drop trying to think about it like I'm talking to your head when I, when I give this guidance. Because if you use your head, you're just thinking, whereas this is an experience. So if, you, if you're the observer of your thoughts, then you, if you experience the witnessing of thoughts, in, that, is, uh, that is an experience where you're not your thoughts. So if you just go back into your thinking and try and think about it, you're back in your thinking. Does that make sense? And that happens more, I think, when you're talking or being talked to, because mm. you tend to think. You okay. Know, yeah. So then, uh, thank you. Okay, thanks for saying that. So then you practice, like, when someone is talking, can you be the observer of the talking? Mm. So you don't, you don't have to identify with my thoughts and stay in the observer. So this is what I call transcending. So I'm going to be here trying to distract you from being in the observer, but can you be the observer while I talk and not go into your head? You can do that, you know. So you can do, you can, you can stay, you can learn to speak while being in the observer. You can learn to move while being in the observer. So this would then be, you, you're going towards being an instrument of the divine. Because you, have, you just have to transcend that nothing is personal. You don't need to be in a limit. So this is what someone was talking about creativity. 
you see. The creativity, you know, if you're not in the limited, then the infinite can express. The infinite creativity of the universe can express through you. So that's how you do it. So if you do years and years of practicing this tool, then actually you will not experience yourself as a body. Like, I don't experience the body right now. I'm not aware of it. That, that, would, that would happen for you. you wouldn't, you'd start to experience yourself as not being the thoughts. Because you'd always be letting go of those habitual, those habitual hooks. Is there, there's a difference isn't there, between like awareness and experience of being. So for example, like Eckhart Tolle will talk about um, you know, presence through um, you know, real focus and awareness on the body rather than identifying with. So awareness and identifying with as being two separate oh. things. So I'm a, you could, I could be aware, you were saying I'm, you're not aware of your body right now, I think you said? Yeah, I'm not aware of the limits of the body, yes. Oh, I thought you said you're not aware of your body Well, that's the right same now. thing. So. Yeah. Well, you could be aware of it without being identified with it. Okay, yeah. well, th thank you. Okay, so I'm aware, I, I'm witnessing the mug. I'm not the mug. Does mm. that make sense? Of course. Yeah, okay. So I'm witnessing that there is a body here, but it's not my body. Mm. Does that make sense? So the camera is here. You talked about that more in terms of for you, for you to connect at an early stage uh, in meditation, where can you feel the blood going through your yeah, hands? To bring that. presence, I think. You yeah, and that. to ground you, to yeah. bring presence, exactly, yeah. and to get out of your mind. But one thing that actually helped me the other day, I was listening to this very interesting thing, and uh, every seven years or so, your body gets totally. Um, Recycled cells, yeah. in terms of cells. Yeah. Like the cells I used to have when I was seven years old, they're not the same that I have now. Mm. So there's nothing in my body today that I that I have today that I mm. had on my seven years. So mm. it's it's completely gone. It's like it's a new body. And uh, the way I feel, uh, I see it uh, moreover now is it's kind of my soul ha habitats the body. But dying is just letting go of that yeah. old shoe and all of that. Yeah. And 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 that that kind of helps me understanding that there, when I'm in the beginning of this. But once I place myself in the observer, I observe a body, and I go into that soul. I go into that love and to the, that has no limits whatsoever. Mm. And I'm observing that. And, uh, I don't know, it does you, you observe it. I mean, I wanted to go off tangent slightly, but I mean, everyone's heard about out of body experiences. I think everyone, I mean, it's such a general thing. Like, people will be in the operating theater, so yes. they'll, they'll just jump out of body and they'll witness from the ceiling everything that's going on, you know, like surgeons cutting them up and, you know, having yeah. a coffee, spilling some coffee on the organs, they say you up, <laughs> then they go back in the body and say, look, you dropped some coffee in me, you see, you see. But they witness these, they just jump out of body. All the senses, you know, the witnessing still functions. It's got nothing to do with the body. You see, you can just dock in and dock out of the body. Um, then they can be witnessing, you see. Uh, oh, I probably shouldn't have done it because you should keep it just to experience. But it's there, there is something Michael that... Michael Singer says in The Untethered Soul, he talks about... Have you read The Untethered Soul? It's a favourite of my friend, The Untethered yeah, Soul, is that book. Yeah, he talks about it. So, I mean, I, it's not that I'm arguing with anything you're saying, and it makes sense to me. I suppose all I'm saying is that... <laughs> I... You know, as I am right now, when you ask me those questions, as I am right now, I feel like my body is part of me, that I'm the awareness, yeah. and that I am my body. and. That's just where I am with this. Please, you please know, be honest. I, I know what the right answer is, yes, but yes, I'm yes, giving yes. an honest answer. No, 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 I want to be honest answer. Please do the honest answer. Yeah. 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 The worst yeah. thing is that. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're all exactly. here. Yeah. 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 Please be honest answer. I'm yeah. grateful for you. Yeah. And you were making progress on that. You were starting to experience things that was witnessing the in and out. Well, I, yeah. The in and out would be interesting. I mean, I've already experienced that before, to be honest with you. That, 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 and I do a lot of meditation, so. I've experienced a lot of being the awareness, yes. um, but the in and out is a really helpful thing to think about actually because then it draws your attention to the fact that there's an awareness of the in and out, so it's yes. kind of taking it a little bit. And is, 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 the, is the awareness uh, limited? Um, see that, again, I don't know. I mean I've had moments actually like where it's felt like it's not, um, yeah. you know, in the last like two years I've had. Experiences where I feel like mm. 
I am unlimited and it's been mm. just mm. a huge wave of peace that's and right. love. That's right. I guess yeah. I've experienced that. But I'm not in that very no, much. Not at all. <laughs> I, I had a little bit of that too and I still had it. So much and in the body, it's I been, have skin issues and all It was that. before I even read anything spiritual that I was um, reading about um, just disbelieving your thoughts. Yes. And mm -hmm. I just, every thought, I just disbelieved, just mm -hmm. a thought. Just thought. And I got to this point of like, just mm -hmm. total peace and calm. And it was wonderful. And just, that's when I've had that exp expansive experience. Yes, yeah. it is expansive yeah. states of flow and the miraculous yeah. unfolding, because uh, there's no limits. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And when you get in life, you, you're there all the time. You're there all the time in life, yeah. That's what you're missing out in because of sheer ego. You're going to be in a state of absolute oneness and, and love and joy forever. So you can hang on to your ego. And it's too, too so, that's, that's, that, if, if, when you're in that state of love, Yes. Like I imagine, like you will feel a huge amount of compassion towards people mm, sort of yes. stuck in their ego that's as well. Right. You know. Well, yeah, I mean that's you know like yeah. Buddha said, you know your 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 attachments are you know create old age suffering, the experience of old age suffering and death, and the only way out of that cycle is enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You know, which is to experience that you know your undying self, your eternal self. Or Saint Francis, you know, I, I was quite you know it's in dying that you're born to eternal life, mm -hmm. and what you're looking for is where you're looking from. What you're, what you're looking for is where you're looking from, is what we're doing here, the observer. You see. Okay, bye. Thank you. So what, you know, what, so what does that mean? What you're looking for is where you're looking from. You see. Yeah. So, and that's what St. Francis, he's a mystic. And what has to die to be born to the eternal? So it's the, it's the death of the experience of the limited ego that has to die. And then there is the eternal, the undying, that which is beyond time, beyond limits. In, so that's the nature of the true self, the infinite self. Mm. Uh, or, and then anything other than that, you're experiencing the limited self. So yeah. the observer tool then is if you experience yourself experientially as being limited now, mm. what's observing that limit? Mm. You know, and then you go to that. And then you are, if you feel yourself, you're feeling yourself like that, and then you go to the observer of that, and now you feel yourself like this, then you go to the observer of that, and then you feel yourself like that, mm -hmm. and you go to the observer of that, until you keep busting the next level out. And then eventually you'll experience yourself as not limited, more and more. So you just have to break what is the current limit, which is breaking, uh, you know, this is my favorite word, your current identification with limits. Because, you know, if you start out, you'll be feeling yourself as very contracted and very limited. You do a bit more of the observer tool, then you'll come back next week and you'll feel more limitless. But you still have that current identification which is more limitless. And you need to go to the observer of that. And then you bust that out. And where, you come do you feel, where do you feel you are with that? Well, I'm, 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 you know, I just met a teacher of enlightenment yesterday. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't experience any sense of limit right now. Sometimes I do, yeah. Mm. You know, if someone screams and shouts, I might suddenly, you know. So, I'll, you know, I do the thymic thump, but I'll share the thymic thump with you later in, on. In yeah. practical terms, when you're doing the observer, how do you actually. I, I see myself I get, I see myself meditating, so I get out and I see myself meditating. You see the observer, the meditating? Yeah. yeah. And then I see the back of the person that is. That is me, but looking at that person, I keep on doing that. Okay, but well, one of the things is <clears throat> with that is what it, what is the observer of images? Be the observer of images. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty strange. Like you know what I mean? Okay. Well, yeah. you're, you're you're. I mean, okay. That's common, but something observes images which is not image, which is not an image. When you said that, I really felt something like yeah. a shift. Like it's really powerful. The observer of the image, well, right? Yeah, yeah, it takes you out, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so be the observer of images, mm. and the observer of images is not an image. Yes. Okay. No. Yeah. So then you bust that. You bust that out because you know everything that passes or changes or is limited. You're not there. Something is observing that. 
Yeah. So whatever, even if you experience yourself as limited awareness.